Right. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming today. I um, want to express our appreciation for your interest in the Women to Women grants and uh, looking forward to talking with you today about it. Um, my name is Barbara Meek. I am on the steering committee for Women to Women and I am also the chair of the grants committee. Um, I've been doing that for a few years and a couple years back we decided that we would do this grant workshop as a way of making sure that everybody had the information that we were looking for. Not that um, people weren't submitting the right things, but we weren't sure that we had expressed all of the specifics that we were um, looking for as we review the grant. So we wanted to help with the process, see if anybody had questions, make it easier. Um, some people aren't as familiar with as others with the grant writing process. And we wanna make sure everybody has the same opportunities. Uh, the Women to Women group is a part of the Illinois Prairie Community Foundation, a great group of women, and um, they are very invested in the community and take our grants very seriously. So what we're going to talk about today, if you go to the agenda slide there, Diana, um, we we'll talk about a little history. I'm going to go over the grant re process, the review, overview of what the grants are this year and talk a little bit about collaboration. And then Diana is going to talk about the objectives, the, um, and Michelle is both writing objectives and measuring objectives. Michelle is gonna talk about the application and how to contact her if you have any questions when you get online to go through the application. And then we'll talk about some issues that we've seen. I totally forgot to introduce my co-presenters. Um, Diana Hammond is also here and she is one of the Women to Women um, group and Michelle Evans is the glue that holds us all together. She is on the staff of the Illinois Prairie Community Foundation. So between the three of us, we hope that we'll be able to answer all of the questions that you have and um, make the process of applying for a grant through Women to Women to be as smooth as possible. So. Uh, as a part of what Michelle sent out, she sent uh, an attachment that if you printed it out, it looks like this. You might want to look at it, but it's just a history of all the grants that have been given out since the inception of the Women to Women Giving Circle. And it had started in uh, 2011. We're coming up on our 10th anniversary. And back in 2011, 105 women were the original donors. We now have over 300. And we also have an endowment that is over three hundred thousand um, dollars. As I mentioned, it's a part of the Illinois Prairie Community Foundation, and all of the money that comes in to Women to Women, uh, only ten percent goes for operating costs, forty-five percent goes into the endowment, and forty-five percent is given out as grants. And as you can see in that handout and on the screen here, um, we have had a phenomenal track run, um, track record in being able to give out between 25 and $40,000. This year we're at 38,000 and looking to be able to increase that. Um, but our focus has changed each year. The number of programs has changed each year. Uh, we have had a lot of interest in it. Uh, we have had 48 total uh, grants funded through the Women to Women and through over $336,000, which is fantastic. Uh, the, the downside of that is we've had over 104 different applicants and over $800,000 of requests. So we aren't able to um, fund every request and that is purely a function that we don't have as much money as we'd like to, to be able to fund everybody that makes a request. So um, this year, I'm gonna go over what we have here. Um, the, one of the other attachments that Michelle sent out was called the Grant Information Sheet, the 2021 Grant Information Sheet. So the grant focus this year is very similar to the years past, it's for pro, pro Programs that support resilience, resiliency, sorry, for children, birth to third grade, and their support networks. This year, we've added the word resiliency based on what's been going on in the world uh, because we feel that that 
capacity to recover quickly from difficulties is really important at this point in time. So last year we had um, programs that support children, birth to third grade and their support networks, families, teachers and caregivers in our community. So with that little nod towards resiliency, we're going with a very similar uh, program focus this year. As I mentioned before, our total grant amount is $38,000. We're hoping to be able to increase that. Um, we'll be letting people know if that gets approved by the um, Community Foundation Board. Uh, most of the time, the awards are between $3,000 and $10,000. Uh, we've probably awarded grants that are less than that, but we probably have never um, awarded more than $10,000. Uh, we also have the ability to give a second year award if you are interested in applying a second year. There's, even if the grant focus has changed, we um, will look at funding a particular program two years in a row. Uh, the application period starts on October 1st of this year. And the submission deadline is 5 p.m. on October 30th. After that, the Grants Committee will read all the submissions. They will get together, review, and create a short list of uh, groups that we would like to have do presentations to us. The presentations are going to be on December 8th, 2020. We have a room reserved at Illinois State University at the Alumni Center. Um, if that doesn't work or we feel that it's not appropriate, we will do those presentations in the same similar process. Um, after the oral presentations, we, the committee meets again that day, makes the final selections that match the dollars available. And then we have to go through a series of approvals from our steering committee, the community foundations group, and then it'll be probably early mid January before you find out the status of the grant. So it uh, does take a little while to get all of that done, but um, hang in there. It's always good. Um, so the, the Women to Women group has the same granting philosophy as a lot of the other groups within the Illinois Prairie Community Foundation. Um, with a few minor tweaks. Um, we do request that you have collaboration, the collaboration with another agency. And we, we decided to do this about three years ago because there were a lot of programs that were being pitched to us that were doing the same thing with the same group of people. And we, this is just a duplication of services and not good use of our community money. So we threw this out in 2018. It got great reviews from people. Um, they really appreciated the ability to work with other people, the difference in what, how you think about how you're doing a program if you are working together with somebody. We do require approval from both of the agencies and it couldn't be three, it doesn't have to be just two. Um, so they will have to, everybody has to be a part of the um, collaboration, both from the, the board members on down. Um, when you come, if you are shortlisted in December to give your presentation, please bring both parties of the collaboration. Um, it really helps show that you know what you're doing, how you're working together, and how this will uh, come about um, and work out in the future. Um, there is a, the grant information sheet has some grant eligibility and we cover four counties here, McLean, DeWitt, Livingston, and Logan. It doesn't have to happen in all four of those counties, just one of them is fine. Um, but if you have the opportunity to be outside of Bloomington Normal, that is great. A budget is also required to be submitted. Michelle will talk about that as she goes through. And uh, signatures have to be on electronic signatures have to be on the grant application. Um, we don't fund non-program related in events. We don't fund endowment campaigns or fundraising campaigns. All of that information is in the 
handout that uh, is called the grant information sheet. Michelle, did I miss anything on that that you can think of that you'd like to add? No, I don't think so. Um, and if you're wondering um, all of these things, the, um, the, well, definitely the grant information sheet will be posted online on the IPCF website. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but all of that information is, is um, available for downloading if you didn't grab it um, for this session. So at this point, Diana's going to talk about measurement. She's going to talk about objectives. And these are two of the critical issues that we have as we review the grants. Making sure that you have, know the difference between goals, objectives, and activities. Um, the, the Grants Committee is a wonderful group of women that really wants you to understand the difference so that you are presenting a program that has those SMART objectives, you know what the goal of the program is, and you have the activities to support those. Uh, so um, Diana's going to talk about that now. Well, thanks. thanks, Barbara. And welcome, Vicki, Madison, Christy. Nice to see everybody here this afternoon. Um, so outcomes, purposes, objectives, oh my. Um, different organizations use the terms um, differently. And what we're going to do this afternoon, do this afternoon is define and provide examples of how the Illinois Prairie Community Foundation and Women to Women use them. Um, if you have questions as we go along, it's small enough group, just um, raise your hand and I'll, if I see it, I'll um, come to you. Um, try and keep it somewhat informal. So um, programs. Um, on the application, it asks for the dates, the beginning and the end of your program, um, the outcome or purpose, the objectives, the activities, the measurement. So let's look at each of those. The outcome or purpose of, um, of your program, um, it's the what. Um, what is the primary purpose or in intended um, outcome of the program? What do you hope to accomplish? Um, if you think of it in terms of um, perhaps writing a headline, you know, what would that headline look like at the, um, at the end of the program? Um, so the primary purpose, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, big picture, sorry. So the, if the outcome is the what, then the objectives are the how. How are we going to achieve that goal? And they provide us with um, they provide us with direction on how to achieve that outcome. Um, so this is pie in the sky. This is not anything that I could actually do, but let's pretend that I wanted to compete and finish um, the Springfield Illinois Marathon in October of 2021. There actually is a Springfield Marathon in October, but I, I will probably not be running in it. Um, how would I accomplish that? Um, how would I accomplish that goal? What objectives would I need to get me there? So the, the objective, the outcome is to finish, compete and finish. Um, objectives, for our purposes, we use the, the acronym SMART. Um, and you may, be, you may be familiar with that already, um, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And it provides a useful format for identifying how to accomplish the what. So what do we want to do? Um, how are we going to do it? Or, I mean, what's the measurement? And we'll be talking more about the measurement. Um, is it relevant? Is it achievable? We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, no, we'll come to it now. Um, and this is a yes or no. This is not actually part of the wording. But um, you have to know in your heart that yes, it's achievable. It's something that can be done by you and your organization and that it's relevant. It's relevant to the mission and the purpose of your organization. And then the, the time bound part as well. Um, so again, the, the achievable and relevant aren't actually written into the objectives, but you must be able to um, sincerely and truthfully be able to, to say that they, that they are achievable and relevant. So if my goal is to run a marathon, I need to work up to that 26.1 mile goal. 
Um, and as I already mentioned, this is not um, achievable or realistic for me at my age and having two bad hips and one bad knee. I probably couldn't even crawl 26.1 miles. Um, but we'll, we'll work with this anyway. So let's, let's say it's achievable and that it's relevant. Um, what might an objective look like? Well, I need to begin increasing the amount um, uh, of the number of miles that I, that I run um, each day. So right now I run um, seven miles five times a week. Ooh, wow. Um, and what I'm going to do over the next 90 days is increase by two miles every 10 days. So I've got the what, increase my daily runs. Um, I've got a measurement in there from five miles a day, five times a week. I'm gonna increase that two miles every 10 days. Okay? And then my time frame is over the next 90 days. Okay? Question so far? You okay? All right. So achievable, yes. If, if I were in good shape and younger, relevant, yes, this would be relevant to working up to that. Okay. Um, what might be some other objectives that I might need to accomplish? Um, well, I need to, how about something related to either um, nutrition, technique? Anybody wanna throw an idea out there? Your own friends. Well, how about um, if I identified and joined a running club by October 1st and then run every week with the members for the next year? That sound doable? Okay, I've got a what, a when, uh, and how much. Um, I might need to engage in a food regimen that would enhance um, my ability to meet the, the rigorous needs of the running schedule. Again, we're not we're not getting into the how yet, how we're doing this, just the, the what. Okay. Um, find a running coach to help me improve my technique and my skills. So again, um, we're, not, uh, we're not writing books, we're not writing even chapters of books um, in terms of objectives, but um, what, by how much, by when. So let's look at something that's a little more um, appropriate for um, our Women to Women Grants, um, to offer a program where grandparents from the We Do Good Work um, interact with three-year-old children at our local preschool to help students make a timely and successful transition from the three-year-old program to the four-year-old program at the preschool. Wow. So we already have collaboration here between the grandparents at We Do Good Works and the children at our local preschool. Um, and we want to assure that three-year-olds are ready to advance to that four-year-old program at the appropriate time. And we've described that in 45 words. Um, just a, a short sidetrack here. If you're, if you're getting past 50 words, you're probably getting into the how, right? Versus what, what the, the goal or the out, proposed outcome is. So in this, there's only a what, there's, there's no how. So if our outcome is to prepare children to make that transition, an objective might be um, that at the end of 12 months, the when, children will correctly recognize 80%, how much, um, of their colors, numbers, letters, and basic shapes appropriate to enter the four-year-old level or program. So the what. So the, the order is a little reversed, but it still has the what, by how much, by when. With me so far? Questions? Okay. So let's look at how we're uh, going to achieve our objectives of learning our colors, numbers. Okay. So what are the activities that we might need to um, engage in? Um, so we're, we're building here. Um, outcome to prepare our children. Objective to learn colors and numbers. Activities. Now, before we get to this particular one, there's probably um, one or two that would need to be achieved beforehand, and that would be that the, the, the grandparents learn um, the program that the, our, uh, that the high school uses, okay, that they um, also have um, uh, gone through the um, process of being, what, what's that, background checks and so forth to be able to, to work with the kids. 
So that's even before we get to actually work with them. So now we're working with the kids and the grandparents will work with the children one-on-one -on -one using age-specific, our local preschool materials to learn their colors, numbers, letters, and basic shapes. Okay. One of the activities that they might engage in. Okay. Um, so do you see how the outcomes need objectives and then need activities? Kind of we're, we're going downhill, not I shouldn't say we're going downhill here, but we're, yeah. So the next part then would be the measurement. And um, we need to determine if we're meeting the objectives and that's where the measurement comes in. We don't expect statistical analysis or time consuming measurements to keep them simple. Um, quantitative is preferred and that's the numbers, that's the head, that's the logic the left brain part, um, the quantitative is the heart, the anecdotal, and that can certainly reinforce um, what you're seeing in the numbers. So the kids um, may be able to show that they, they're achieving 80% or better in terms of learning their numbers, colors, letters, shapes, um, but then what are they telling grandma and grandpa about that, about maybe how they're using them? You know, I was able to teach my, um, my younger brother the color red, so just um, some uh, quantitative supported by the qualitative. So if, our, um, if my objective is to run 20 miles a day, my measurement might be nothing more than um, a calendar noting the number of miles that I run each day. Um, I could note in the calendar, that's the, the, qualitative, uh, the quantitative. I could also note in there maybe how I felt as I was running that day. Because, you know, it was a rainy day and I didn't really feel like running the 14 miles, but I did it anyway and I feel good about having done that. Okay. Um, if we're talking about back to our kids and learning their colors and numbers, um, it could be, again, as simple as a pre and post evaluation to determine if we met that 80%. Okay. So we might start out with a pre evaluation and maybe we show that um, two of the 20 kids knew their colors. Um, only one child knew their numbers from 1 to 20. Okay. So we have that beginning and we can show at the end then um, how much um, improvement has been made over the, the course of the, the program with the grandparents. So again, we're not looking for huge statistical labor-intensive measurements. Keep them simple. Um, we had a second objective which was that the children um, would show, be able to show age specific um, appropriate interactive behavior. And a measurement there could be a visual observation um, based on specific criteria that the preschool uses. That was quick, um, down and dirty. So what, what, I'm sure you have questions. So unmute yourself if you want, just um, Alt A and let me know what, what else you need. Couldn't have been that good. Oh, it was great, Diana. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what I'd like to talk about now are some of the pitfalls that we've seen groups have in the past when submitting their application. I think that the first one, it sounds so silly, but make sure that you're meeting the focus of the grant. This year, it, the focus is programs that support resiliency, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties for children, birth to third grade, and their support networks, families, teachers, caregivers in our community. If you bring to us a program that is fantastic, but it focuses on teenagers, it won't get approved. And you'd be surprised <laughs> how often that happens. So, and it has to be a good fit with the focus. Don't take a shoehorn and try to make it fit. I've got this great program I need some money for. We, the, the committee will see through something that is not a good match with the focus. So make sure you're there. Um, you need to have the collaboration with another agency, another group. It can't be um, two parts of your same group. It has to be another agency, a different group of people. 
Um, making sure that you have the SMART objectives is very important to the grants committee. I think Diana did a great job of going through what all of that means. Having the measurement tools that are clear and honest measurement tools. We are not looking for programs that measure their success by enticing five kids to show up. And if that is a measurement tool, we'll, be, we'll feel we are successful if we have 12 participants. That is not what we're looking for. You know, the post, the pre and post evaluations are always great. Anything that you can do to add in there on the measurement tools to show that you are really looking to make sure that the program is successful. In the past also, we had some problems with budgets. Um, the group developed a budget form format that we like to see. It's a part of the application. You can download it either in Excel or Word. And so now we have some consistent budgets. And so we solved that uh, problem. We haven't seen that issue in the last couple of years. So um, make sure you're adding in all of the budgetary information that we are looking for as well. Um, Michelle, uh, yeah. what do you want to add to that? Anything at all? Or you want to go into looking at the application process? I would like to go to the application process. Does anybody uh, have any questions? Well, yeah, let's stop back that and first. forth from Diana's screen to Michelle's screen here. She's going to log on to the website. Mm, yes, I am. And sh show us what it looks like. Yes, hi, Vicki. Yeah, I, I'm, and you might be getting into this a, a little later too. It's just that resiliency piece mm -hmm. as far as um, ideas. You know, we're trying to decide who we are going to partner with exactly, but just trying to see what kind of outcomes you might be looking for <clears throat> from that. Um, I mean, there's just it's such a wide span of things, and it's just like I'm not. Are, are we trying to uh, maybe just show how children have proven that they have increased their resiliency, or maybe the families, or is that kind of the idea of what you guys are looking for? It could be that how it has improved, or it could be teaching people skills to cope um, in a better way. We, we intentionally left it open. Um, I think we'll have to go through a little bit of training with the grants committee on what we, so that we're all, we are all on the same page. But um, it could be, you know, how people can be helpful with each other, you know, posit having positive emotions in a time when things don't feel positive. It could be um, staying connected with support groups, um, staying positive, um, being helpful. Those, you know, kind of open-ended with that, really. Okay, all right, thanks. And then- That's a good then, question. And then I, I think you, you clarified for me too that when you talk about collaboration, it cannot be two different departments within the same organization. It must be two separate organizations, correct? Two separate organizations. Okay. If you have any specific questions, you know, you can shoot Michelle a, an email and she'll say, yes, that one would fly. No, that, that probably wouldn't. She can give you the committee's opinion on it or. Um, yeah, we, we assume, we assume that was what was going to be, but I just wanted to make sure to clarify, you know, cause we, we have that intergenerational component in our organization, but um, wanted to make sure that it was a separate, uh, partnership that we needed so that's that separate would be fine. 501c3 yep well yeah nonprofit. it could be a church it could be a school right. it could be a government agency too that aren't necessarily 5013c's um, but the collaboration I think it's important that they're both serving um, a nearly equal um, job in this, right? We don't want just one place, you're collaborating with one place just to use their facilities, that, and then the other one is just using, you know, doing all of the work, but one is is housing the program. We really want um, some interaction between the two collaborating organizations. Got it. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Sure. So, um, on July, I'm wrong month, October 1st, <laughs> or a little bit beforehand, um, 
the um, application will become live on the um, special or the Illinois Prairie Community Foundation's website. Um, and this will be on the fall grants page. So it's ilpraircf.org slash fall grants. And it's in the information guide also. It will also be, there'll be something on our homepage of our website also sending you, telling you to come to the fall um, grants page. Um, so you will start here and I can tell you um, on that day there will be a pink button sitting in the middle of the women to women and I don't remember what color youth engaged in philanthropy but you don't care because you're going to women to women right now. Um, you will be able to start the application from that button but because the button's not active right now I will take you there in just a moment but this page here has a lot of the information that you're going to need. It has um, the information sheet that we were talking about. Um, it has a link to that. It has a printed version. Like if you were wanting to start filling out your application now without doing it online, you can find a printed version of it. It is not editable though. So you'll just have to, you can see all the questions that are there that might help you. Um, in the past, we always suggest that um, you start your application process in a Word document and fill it out that way. Um, and then it's easy to share that with somebody else so that you can um, have someone else look at it before you actually submit it to tell you whether um, any of it makes sense to somebody who maybe is not um, vitally important to the program. Um, we, you know, we all know that um, when we type or write something, it makes sense to us because we were writing it, but uh, somebody else reading it may not have um, the same ideas. And so um, having someone else not um, closely related to the program uh, read it might offer you some good um, advice. There is also a link to our resources and forms page where you will be able to download the budget document. You can either download a Word or an Excel version, whichever works better for you. Um, and when you're done with the program, if you get a final grant, you'll be able to get the final report forms there too. Um, so let's pretend there's that button there that's going to take you to the application to sign in. Um, if you've never um, signed into this program before, um, Vicki, you have, so this will, you should already have your password and everything. If you haven't, you're going to do um, new applicants and click there and sign up for a new um, account. But since I already have an account, I am going to log in. And it always asks um, your ID, tax ID number. I'm just going to put zero in here because I'm, I'm getting through here quickly. Um, it will give you a warning saying something that, oh, you're not really found. That's not really a, a tax ID number. You, when you apply, will actually put in your um, EIN number there. Don't just put zero, please. Um, so you will get into the application and it looks like this. There are um, two, four, six, eight, wow. Uh, 11 tabs across the top. And it's gonna just walk you through different things. Here's where the lead organization is gonna fill in their information, their um, tax ID number, which I believe auto populates with what you had um, put on the screen before. You can um, select what kind of organization you are, put your website, brief history of your organization um, and your mission statement, and then you would um, go on to the next um, section, which is information about the collaborating partner. Um, next section is um, an overview of the program. Here's where we're going to request how much money you want. Um, there's two different things here. It's asking for how much money you want for the grant. And so remember that um, it's usually between three and $10,000 that we're giving away. But what is the total budget for your program? That, or for your grant program. So that may, well, most likely be more than what you're asking for. Um, you would indicate which counties you're in, what's the name of your program. Your program area, again, is um, one of a variety of different options. Give us a brief summary of your program, um, including some goals and the community need it would address. Um, how does that fit in with women to women? Um, 
How does this help um, achieve the mission of each collaborating partner? And then, you know, some more information, target market or target population, um, who will conduct the program. Don't just say Vicki Hightower because while we know who you are, Vicki, not everybody else knows who you are. So give a little bit of your credentials or your title or something there. Um, next one would be more details about the program. When's it going to start? When's it going to end? Um, the grant cycle actually runs uh, February 1st, 2021 through January 31st, 2022. So your program needs to happen during that time. If it's an ongoing program, that's fine, but you have to spend all the money by January 31st, 2022. Um, it's asking for um, primary purpose or intended outcome of your program. That's what Diana, one of the things she was talking about. Um, new this year, we added a question about coronavirus just because um, during this year's cycle, 2020, we've had a lot of programs that had to make adjustments for um, the pandemic. So um, we don't know whether it's going to continue into this grant cycle, but if it does, um, can you, you know, give some adjustments that might have to be made? Um, here's where you're going to start listing your objectives and then the activities that are going to go to that um, objective. Um, and then here is your measurements. How will you determine if it's been achieved? Then you're going to do that for objective two and objective three. Um, Rationale is um, uh, telling us a little bit more about your program. It's an existing program or it's new. Um, some more details. Um, about Michelle, I'm going to jump in real quick. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, a lot of grants don't fund um, new programs, the pilot programs. We will. Mm -hmm. We will be seed. We can consider being seed money for a program, but we do know that we can't continue to fund it forever. So we want to hear how you anticipate funding it in the future. So a pilot program is perfectly acceptable for the Women to Women Grant. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, and that, that'll ask that here. Or if it's um, not, if it's a new program for you, but it's been done somewhere else, tell us about that too. Um, then you're gonna get over to the budget page. And this is, not the budget document, but it's just going to ask you questions about your budget. Um, is it a new and existing one? Um, where else are you getting money for this? Have you applied for any other grants? If you don't get the full amount that you're asking for, um, what changes would you be making to your program that would cut um, where could give us some idea where if if we have to cut the amount of money that we can give you where what would you be doing to, you know, um, cut that program or make changes? I think that that is also a really important question that the grants committee looks at because sometimes we're not able to fund um, each program to its full, full amount and to be able to spread the money around, we look at that particular question to see what impact it has if we can't fully fund it. So, um, be aware that that's not just a fill in the blank question, but something that really is important to the committee as we review them. Yeah, thank you. Um, there's a demographics page. It's optional to fill this out, but it helps the Community Foundation um, track who we're serving and um, uh, it's, it's helpful to the Community Foundation. It has no bearing on your grants at all. It's just um, more housekeeping. Key contacts. Here is um, where you're going to fill in the head of your organization. If uh, the head of your organization is not who's filling in the application or who will be the contact for the application in the future, please indicate who I should be contacting when we have some issues um, going forward. Because off, I mean, uh, more often than not, the head of the organization is not going to be handling the minutia of this grant unless it's a small organization. Um, expectations, um, let's see, we'll tell you um, if you are going to be a finalist and need to do a presentation for us, we'll let you know in mid-November. And then the uh, presentation date is again December 8th at ISU, hopefully. If not, we'll do it through Zoom. Uh, so you can agree to that. Um, some other information about media, 
um, um, including our letting us use your logo and different things. Um, so some stuff to confirm, it's all, um, and then some signatures and a title. Uh, back up to the top, here's attachments. Um, so you're gonna need to attach your um, IRS letter of determination or tax exempt status for the lead organization and all the collaborating partners. So this is where um, it helps if you don't start your application on October 29th, because um, sometimes you have to gather that information from the other organization and um, just timing wise, it really, you need to plan ahead. Um, you'll need a list of uh, your board of directors and um, that information for all of your collaborating partners. Um, the budget document, um, this is where you're gonna upload it Unfortunately, this system does not allow us to um, put an actual link right here. So it does tell you where you can get it. But again, it is back. Um, you can find it here at this um, resources page. It actually is under many places. It can be found under grants, um, 20, right, right up here under general information, budget information for grants. It's a Word document or a um, Excel document. So you'll have to download that in advance let me just tell you, save it first to your computer and then fill it in and save it again before you attach it. Because oftentimes people fill it in when they open it and um, then they forget to save it and they attach it to the system and I get a blank um, budget document when it comes through. So just remember to save it twice. So you're gonna be uh, attaching your budget you um, can, you don't have to attach um, organization logos if you want. That's just helps us if we're promoting you. And um, your, the history and mission of the collaborating partners because earlier we asked for that for the lead organization and now we want it for the collaborating um, organizations. Just so that um, we have that information because the committee does look through that. And then the last thing is a review. And of course, right now it's freaking out because I haven't filled in anything. So it's gonna tell you um, if you're getting to this point, what's not filled in properly. So um, then you can go back and finish it. There is an option through this whole process to finish or to save it and come back another time and finish it. You also have an option to share your, um, your application with another person on staff or another person um, at the other uh, organization. But again, I do suggest that um, you fill in a lot of these questions in a Word document and then it's easier to share that Word document with the other organization. Um, and then you will submit it and you will, when you submit, you will get a um, confirmation email. If you aren't sure whether that actually happened, you can definitely email me and um, ask me to double check that that the email or the grant application came in. Try not to do that at um, 4.50 on the 30th because um, my phone probably will be busy, busy, busy with other people asking me to do the same thing. Um, if you come in and you save the application, you will not be using the button that's going to be here to get back to your saved application. When, the but, when I put the button here um, on October 1st, it will take you to start a new application. Don't click that if you've already saved it. You will get an email um, that's, that says you've started and saved and it'll tell you to come back to, um, it'll give you another link to get back into it. But if you have already started one and you wanna get back into it, here's the click here button. I think I also last year put another button up here that says return to a previously started application. So um, this page on the IPCF website, the fall grants page will be your best friend for the next month. Um, also feel free to email me here or call me. Um, I uh, really don't know what off hours times are. My uh, phone gets all my emails. So uh, I will try to respond as quickly as I can to anything um, concerning grant applications. But does anybody have any questions while I'm here? Either with the application or 
the um, website. Michelle, can I make a, a comment and, and yeah. offer? Um, first, the, the grant application that's being used now is so completely different and improved from when we first started out doing these grants. Um, and I, I, I certainly appreciate the, the work that Michelle's done on, on getting the application in a, even though it may look um, onerous now, it's not um, once you get into it. And the other is um, if, if you have questions about um, outcomes and objectives and activities and measurements, um, if Michelle, if you wanna share my contact information, that would be fine. Sure, why don't we put it um, into the uh, PowerPoint that we were just showing and uh, I'll put a slide at the end for contact information and then I'll post the PowerPoint um, to this website. Actually, I can, I can put it over in the chat too. Oh yeah, you can do that too. And then if people have. Um, I did wanna briefly show you what the um, budget form does look like. And um, because Women to Women is so awesome, they created this budget document a couple of years ago and now every grant application that comes through IPCF uses the same budget document. So kudos to the Women to Women um, for coming up with an awesome grant um, budget form. But it asks, um, you know, how much money are you asking for from IPCF? How much money are you getting from other sources? Tell us who they are and here's the amount. And if you're getting any in-kind um, contributions, you would tell us where those are coming from and the amount. Then on the second page, so that, that first page is your income. The second page is your expenses. And you can start, uh, you can talk about, you know, materials and supplies. Don't just tell us about the things that you're asking for the grant money for. We want to see what the budget for the whole program would be. Um, but breaking out how that relates to your project and how that, that money would be used. Um, Michelle, yeah. could you share that screen that you're looking at? Oh, I'm so sorry. I know. It happens. Um, let me stop the share and start again. I am so sorry. You had it on a different screen. I did. It popped away. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Sorry again. Um, front page. And actually, you can fill in the year here. This is not year specific and put your project name and then um, start filling in the uh, request, um, source money from other sources in kind. And then the second page is, uh, you know, materials and supplies, food and catering, traveling. Uh, you can read as well as I can. So um, all, you can put personnel amounts here and tell us how much personnel will be related to that grant, but we do not like to fund for personnel, so don't tally that into what you're going to be asking for. Um, so again, if you have any questions on the budget, I am here to help with that. Um, I think the, the uh, categories are pretty clear and uh, uh, easily used across the board, so um are there any questions yeah thank you. Thank you. so uh in the application of uh, that new question about the covid um impact <clears throat> my question is um because we're as we're writing it you know we're in the middle of it do mm -hmm. i mean our hope is always that our numbers will grow if once this is some of these restrictions are removed is it better to write it for just where we're at right now in the people that we're serving or what we're hopefully going to be doing mm -hmm. in, um, you know, almost the flip instead of saying what, what happens if COVID continues? It's like, what happens if COVID doesn't? I mean, our numbers could, could increase. So I, I don't know which is the best approach is to kind of look at our numbers now or where we're hopefully projecting them to be starting in February, if everything got lifted. Barb. I know. I think that it could be written either way. I think, you know, when we decided to add that question, we were hopeful we'd be farther along than we are right now. Um, but if you want to make your grant 
application on the basis of where we sit right now and the way um, life is unfolding and then answer the question with the opposite. I'm certain that the committee would fully understand that and grasp, you know, what the difference between the two program concepts would need to be. Okay, yeah, because, you know, I'm sure you're aware, you know, but even with our child care, it's week to week, you know, at first we were, our numbers were down, then they almost tripled, and then yeah, within a week, something else happened, and they went back down again, so yeah. trying to figure out what, I mean, we know what our normal numbers are um, when we're in full operation, but uh, just not knowing which way to go, because it's almost a 50% difference in how many children we would serve, so it's, I was just trying to figure out which approach would be best. Sure, and I mean, the, the kind of reverses um, what happened this year was everybody filled out their applications um, in November or October of last year. Who would have ever foreseen that, you know, worldwide pandemic hit us in March just as these programs were kicking off. Right. So um, we did make a ton of accommodations for um, nearly all of our programs, and we understand that. So um, I think it's more like, yeah, what would you do with unforeseen changes? But again, okay. you can't predict unforeseen changes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we'll probably, you know, the more I keep thinking about, it, we'll probably do about a halfway meeting point, maybe like yeah. just mm -hmm. low numbers, high numbers. We'll probably go in the middle and, and just have that conversation mm -hmm. then. So, okay. Seems like a safe, safe. Yeah. Plan. All right. Thanks. Sure. Michelle mentioned that at the end of the grant cycle, you will be required to fill out a uh, final report. That template is also in those forms that she was showing you. Um, another obligation that we have, it's probably one of the boxes that you click in the application, is doing your a final presentation to the um, whole group. Hopefully, we get to do that in person this year. We call it our summer solstice and it's usually, you know, mid-June, June 21st or whatever. Um, this year we postponed it a little bit, hoping we'd be able to have it in person and we ended up doing it on Zoom. Um, but that's where you can talk about your program, what you did, how you did it. Um, if you can have some of the participants come along, that's always great. It's a feel good time for the donors to know that their money was going to good use. So that's also a part of that. That would be for this cycle, that would be June of 2022. 21. 21? 22. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> good Until or is it a midpoint? Is it a it's, midpoint? It's a midpoint, it's not a final. You you are certainly correct. It is a midpoint. It's before the final report, it's halfway through the year. How are you doing? What's the progress of the, yes. Thank you, Michelle. For it's very it confusing up. working two years in advance. <laughs> um, so are there any other questions that you guys have that we can help um, answer while we're here? This was the best thing ever. <laughs> Yay. All right. Um, well, starting um, October 1st, but maybe a few days beforehand, there will be a button on the website that will allow you to get in and um, start um, filling out your application. Um, like I said, right now there is a, um, a printable version of the application that you can see that has all the questions that you will be asked. So if you're, if you want to start um, planning ahead and you're really that excited to get rolling two weeks early, um, go ahead and uh, download that and look at what the actual questions are. I would really suggest do not wait until the last week to do this um, or to start it. You can finish it the last week, but do not wait until the last week to start this. There is a lot of coll uh, collecting of information that you're going to have to get um, related to both your organization and the collaborator or collaborators. And I hear every year um, a crying call on the last day that I, I, that person at the other organization is not getting back to me with their, with their budget or their uh, board list or their EIN numbers. And you have to plan ahead. So and not to be mean, but if other people can do it, everybody can do it. So 
Awesome. Barb? Wrap I want up. to thank everybody for coming. And um, feel, free to, <laughs> feel free to use Michelle as a resource. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. That's what she's so. here for. And if she's a wealth of knowledge, she keeps us on track. If she has questions about, you know, is this going to work or isn't going to work, um, she oftentimes will give me a buzz, and I have even passed some questions through the, um, the steering committee. So uh, she's just the point of contact that has all of the answers um, for you. And we want everybody to be successful in putting together the application. That's the whole reason we decided to do these workshops is so that um, you knew what information we were looking for. And it's not, it's, there's not a secret to it. It's all out there open. If you have questions, you know, contact Diana, contact me. Um, we will, we want to help you have a good application because I, we are certain that what you're doing for our community is very important. We want to be able to support it.